Hello there. The UK and EU have started the post-Brexit trade talks in earnest today, but it appears that Brussels has already come to the conclusion that the UK side will walk away from the table in June. Firstly, as ever, please kick that YouTube algorithm up the rear by giving this video a big fat like. And I'm always uploading new content, so please do check my YouTube channel daily. Now, the UK chief Brexit negotiator, David Frost, is heading a team of about 100 UK negotiators who will be attending the talks in Brussels over the next four days, starting the process of coming to a free trade deal by September this year. But Boris Johnson has put a hard deadline of the 31st of December in place with no room to extend. And he's also stated that the UK will cease participating in negotiations if he believes that there has been insufficient progress in the talks by the time of the scheduled June high-level meeting between the two parties. And this has led Brussels to assess that the UK is just gearing up for a dramatic headline-grabbing June showdown – where Boris can declare that those bad Eurocrats won't play ball so he can then pull the plug on the talks and say he's going for a full WTO Brexit, and all for domestic political purposes. But the EU then says it expects the UK to play brinkmanship and wait for the EU to run cap in hand to London at the 11th hour asking for a deal. Michel Barnier said in the German newspaper Der Spiegel yesterday that... Johnson is very clever, but he also knows that I've been in this business for a long time and that I'm not going to allow myself to be fooled. And talking to The Telegraph, one EU diplomat asked the rhetorical question of whether the UK was really there to negotiate or just to sit there twiddling thumbs until the EU made a last-ditch effort to save the talks. And the basic belief from Brussels seemed to be that the UK will walk in June, but that both sides would soon be talking again after that, and the UK would want to press for a deal to be done by September. But Brussels is still pushing the line that it's either a full trade deal with zero tariffs and zero quota restrictions, but with a level playing field arrangement that the EU was happy with, or it has to be WTO terms. And the EU says it is prepared for a WTO result in December. So it looks like both sides might be sitting on their hands waiting for the other side to crack first. And I have to say that it looks to me like the EU hasn't quite grasped that the UK is driving for full independence, not for some sort of control from Brussels. The EU seems to think that the UK will come round to some sort of safe option of being an EU colony, as long as Eurocrats refuse to budge and they just hang on. But while all that's going on, the UK has issued its aims for our trade negotiations with the USA in the form of its negotiating mandate. And on this one, Boris Johnson has pledged to drive a hard bargain with the US and that neither the NHS nor lowering food standards was on the table, something the UK negotiating mandate makes clear. Trading Scottish smoked salmon for Stetson hats, we will deliver lower prices and more choices for our shoppers, said the Prime Minister. On the NHS, the 184-page UK mandate document said, The NHS is not and never will be for sale to the private sector, whether overseas or domestic. And on food standards it says, Any trade agreement with the US must work for the UK consumers, farmers and companies, and the government will strongly defend our right to regulate in these areas in the public interest. The government's manifesto has made it clear that in all of our trade negotiations we will not compromise on our high environmental protection, animal welfare and food standards. 
These talks are expected to start later on this month and will be headed up by Crawford Falconer, the government's chief negotiation adviser and formerly New Zealand's chief negotiator as well as ambassador to the World Trade Organisation. The UK International Trade Secretary Liz Truss told BBC Breakfast that We will not diminish our food safety standards and we will also not put the NHS on the table or the price the NHS pays for drugs on the table. These are two very clear red lines in our trade deal. And she also laid down the red lines on the UK fishing industry, saying We are not going to trade away our fishing in a deal with the EU or any other negotiating partner. We are going to get a deal with the EU that does not involve selling out our fishing. But France is having none of that. The French Minister for Europe, Amélie de Montchalin, had already said that there would be no deal unless the UK guaranteed adequate fishing rights for EU fishermen. Talking on the BBC Mar show yesterday, she said that France would be prepared to collapse the talks for the sake of the EU fishing industry. And she said that her side would play the talks with emotion, with drama, with passion, with symbols and we know how to make it a very, I think, nasty battle. And the Express reports that France has warned the UK that its fishermen will block cross-channel ports if no trade deal is agreed with the European Union and is prepared for a very nasty battle if fishing is excluded from any agreement. And the Times says that Whitehall officials told ministers that there was a very realistic chance major ports, including Calais, could be blockaded by EU fishing boats. But while we're on the subject of agriculture and fishing, I have to say I was surprised to hear that a senior UK government adviser has been flying the idea that UK agriculture and fishing are not critically important to the UK. According to the Daily Mail, Dr Tim Lunig, who is one of the advisers to the new Chancellor of the Exchequer, Rishi Sunak, said that the food sector was not critically important to the UK economy and that fishing certainly wasn't. Now it may be that the food sector is only worth 0.5% of the UK economy, but workers don't work when there's no food and generally, as Lenin said, no country is further than three meals from a revolution. As far as I'm concerned, we are an island nation and both energy and food security are of paramount importance. Spreadsheets of numbers do not always hold the answers. Now, many of you will know that the EU wants to hack chunks out of the UK during these negotiations that include tying us up in ECJ knots, taking as much of Northern Ireland and Gibraltar as they can get, taking as much control over UK fishing waters as they can wrest from us, and even have the Elgin marbles return to Greece while we're at it. But now there's a new one. France wants the remains of Napoleon III to be repatriated to them. At present, he is laid to rest in St Michael's Abbey in Farnborough, and his wife is also buried nearby. And the Telegraph reports, A request has been sent to the Foreign Office asking government to consider Napoleon III, nephew of the bellicose emperor defeated at Waterloo, in any future negotiations over returning cultural treasures. Now, as I understand it, Napoleon III was defeated in battle by Otto von Bismarck and was then exiled in England until his death in 1873. So one could say he came to the UK for refuge. And now that his country has settled and is in relative peace, then maybe it's time for repatriation and a goodwill gesture. Anyway... If you want to hear more from me, please don't forget to subscribe and also press that little bell, or you won't get any notifications. And if you want to see more of me, buy a mug with my mug on it. So what do you think about all of this? Please share and comment, and thank you for listening. Please do like and share this video, and also subscribe to my channel. 
and when subscribing, please do remember to press on the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get an alert every single time I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching.